Welcome to Spokane, Washington. We are here in the kennel. We've got a matchup today between the Gonzaga Bulldogs and the St. Mary's Gales. It's pink out night, so everyone's wearing their pink for breast cancer awareness. I'm Thomas Gallagher, alongside me is Bria Cade. And we've got a great matchup here. The uh, 20 and five Gonzaga Bulldogs, 11 and one in conference versus this 12 and 12 St. Mary's Gales who are six and seven in conference. And we're just gonna jump in, we almost got tip off here, but some key players to look out for, Ali Bamberger and Iman Ejim for the Zags. And we're jumping right into it. Okay, here we go. Kaylee Trong gets the ball off to the tip, and the Zags are right into their offense. Bria, do you wanna talk about what we saw in the first matchup these uh, Zags had with the Gales? In the first matchup, yeah, they actually was a really close game. In the end of the first quarter and third, they were only down by one. So I'm expecting a close game today and really to see who's just going to fight to the finish. Holland with the ball. Off the foot of Abby O'Connor. Verjoge looks for Kaylee, finds her. Eyes up with Kaylee. Always looking for the open pass. And Sierra Walker from deep. Just back rim there. Offensive foul on Holland of the Gales. The Zags get their first baseline inbound pass. Kaylee's having a hard time finding someone. Able to get it out to O'Connor. Coming across the Verjoga screen. And just wide pass to Kaylee. Early struggles here for the Zags. Yeah, two quick turnovers by both teams and that's one thing that I was going to say to the keys of the game is they need to watch their turnovers. Both teams um, struggle with their turnovers and was the reason that they probably lost the game to BYU and uh, the Gales wise. And there's the player to watch for the Gales, Bamberger, following up that miss for the Gales. They take a 2-0 lead here early in the first. In that first matchup, both teams had 14 turnovers, but the Zags had more of an advantage on the points off turnovers. So we will see who, will able to, who are able to capitalize on that right now. The Gales were able to get two off of that turnover. And a beautiful move there mm. from Kaylee, unable to finish. Put them in the spin cycle. And there's Bamberger again, cutting to the key and finding the backboard. Girls got to get back. Um, our ladies guys have to get back and get in, in front of her. Unless you're Anna, you can play behind her. But... Bamberger is very strong and physical. She, if you're a guard behind her, she will back you down and get the easy basket. O'Connor trying to look for the strong move, unable to get there. Walker, second chance points here from deep. Just off. And they bring up a spark off the bench immediately. Yvonne Ejim, a consistent scorer, player to watch for, a defensive specialist as well down in the paint. Quick answer here, I guess, for maybe to protect the paint from Bamberger, getting those easy buckets, but. Hopefully with uh, Ronnie in the game, she gives them that spark and they find a rhythm. Absolutely. Off to something. They're going fast. Ejim down the court with a left play, making her impact known immediately. Four, two, Gales. Now that's what we like to see. Come off and do something. We Whedon from the corner. Second chance opportunity, unable to be converted there from Mastora. Walker finds Egypt down in the paint. She's having her opportunities to work it, but she can't there. Steps out on the baseline. She saw that she had the advantage um, against Holland, so she was going to take that. But like you said, just stepped on the um, line out there. Just got to watch your position, positioning. The Zags do have a, a slightly bigger team then the Gales, so they can capitalize there with the mismatch that Ejim has there. And she is very confident in the post, especially when she has someone smaller than her guarding. So she's calling for it now. And Walker, mm. unable to get it to her, but there's a foul from Dalton on Ejim. Yeah, Ejim is just an absolute spark off the bench. Probably the sixth uh, woman of the uh, WCC, I would say. Uh, one of the top scorers for the Zags and uh, just always consistent. I definitely think she's in the running for a sixth man off the bench. Kaylee takes it out, having to try to run something. Tough shot. 
Can't follow it up after the block from Dalton. Kaylin from deep, very deep. Now that was that was nice. Second chance, second chance, and kick it out to hit the three. And they take their first lead of the game, and she, Kay, Kaylin is trying to get her hands on the ball and get it back for the Zags to score again. Okay, okay, so with that three, I feel like they're picking it up. We see some smiles on the court now, and that's usually the Zags type of play. They smile all over the place, and I'm ready for the game to pick it up. Unlike most teams, the Zags do have a lot of scoring come off the bench with uh, Kaylin and Yvonne. The, the, the Gales usually play their five most of the game, maybe reaching to six uh, with some other players stepping in for minutes, but their, their points come mostly from their starters. Mm. Tough drive and a finish there from Holland, working Ejim down to the baseline. That was great defense by the Zags, and I will give a, um, I will give credit to Holland for making that tough shot. But great defense by the Zags. They moved their feet, and just a last-minute call underneath the basket. Yeah, just like the first matchup, the first, the first three quarters, it was a uh, pretty close affair. So we'll see if that happens again today. But the Zags started off a bit cold, but the spark of uh, Kaylin and uh, Yvonne brought some, brought some points on the board for the Zags. Working a high screen there for Kaylee. Unable to make that tough shot off the glass. Whedon down the court to Holland. Dalton working it on Kaylee. Ejim aggressive. Looking for the steal there and another opportunity for subs where Joke finds her way back in the game and Williams gets her first opportunity on the court. Let's just shout out that Zag defense real quick. Did you know they're first in the conference in scoring defense with 55 points? And their last few, I want to say eight opponents, they've been able to hold them to fewer than 60 points. So the Zag defense has been phenomenal all year, and it just keeps getting better, and they keep showing us what they can do. Astora. We didn't have the top of the key. The man-to-man -man is strong here from the Zags. For Joe get a little handsy there with Bamberger. You can't be completely hands off. You have to, you know, square up with her and, uh, but the contacts can't be uh, from the hands. Refs will always call that if the hands are, are low or swiping or any contact of that sort. Expect the battle of the bigs tonight. You see how both of them down there, Anna's trying to make sure she doesn't get the ball in. Bamberger's trying to post up, but. Five second call coming up here. She able to get it off. Mm. And the turnover there from Whedon. The Zags defense coming alive here in the middle of the first. Just seems like a little bit of miscommunication between the Gales not knowing where her uh, teammate was. Michaela at the top of the key. Kaylee to Yvonne. And stays here off of Bamberger. And with that, we're going to head into our first break. We are here in the kennel, and you're watching Gonzaga Women's Basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium.
And we are back here in the kennel, and Yvonne Egypt unable to finish the shot there. Just a little unbalanced underneath the basket, she got it. Two point game here in the middle of the first. Just want to update all of y'all of what's been going on with both these teams in their last games. Gonzaga was able to come out in clutch against USF in San Francisco with a six point comeback with 30 seconds left and a buzzer beater for Melody Kempton. While the Gales were unable to close out a matchup between the number one and the WCC BYU when they lost the, the lead going into the second half and the lead was extended in fourth. But Sierra Walker making her name known here early with a three from the left wing. This is a great transition basketball. They're pressing, getting the turnover, swinging back down court, hit the three. Nice defense by Michaela. Astora dribbled for a while there, unable to find anything, and the Zags are all over the place. Hands up, creating havoc on defense. Astora is able to come through and find the floater there. When the Gales are able to break the press, they are able to find the basket and get a look off, but in that press, they've been struggling to, to get past it. Kaitlyn Trong showing her vision here. Oh, there's there's the shot from Sierra Walker, but the play there before or after, uh, Kaitlyn Trong, Trong was showing her vision, but Ivana Ejim unable to hold on to the ball and finish for the layup. See, there we go again. That press just got them all tied up. They beat it, so good job on the Gales, but you can tell the frustration that the Zags are bringing out of them. Holland with a bit of a fadeaway there, able to finish. Way to create a shot for herself. Kaylin being aggressive, moving the ball up. Finds the Jogi at the top, swinging to Sierra Walker. Yvonne has Bamberger on her, goes with the left. Can't finish there, Bamberger. Pulls down the rebound, but Ejim, eyes always, always looking for the ball, unable to convert there for the steal. And she will step out as Kempton will come in, as well as Kaylee will re-enter the game. While we're talking about Vani and steals, you know she's leading the team in steals with 37 and also leads the team in they come at an expensive cost, especially down the line. Yeah, even though Egypt hasn't been able to convert down low, I do, the aggressiveness is, I think, necessary to establish the opportunities for free throws down the line. And, and I know Kaylee likes seeing those two free throws um, go in just now. She's been able to create a look for herself. It just hasn't been able to go in. So those two free throws did the job. And great two-on-one by the Gales. Just finding the person, faking it out and getting open. Making it look easy and sweet little give and go for Bamberger. Leading score here early for the Gales. Zags are swinging around, finds Kempton down low. Pump fakes, goes with the right, and gets the foul. What was uh, shocking is the last time you, St. Mary's and Gonzaga played, Kel Mel only had two points and 10 rebounds. 10 rebounds, phenomenal, great job, but two points. So we're Waiting to see if she'll have a bigger scoring night tonight. Yeah, if, some, if someone told me that she had 10 rebounds, I would assume there'd be some points to it. Right. Some second chance putbacks or whatever, but. It was uh, very shocking. Yeah, must have been mostly defensive rebounds. And the Zags are very good at their free throws. They are second in the WCC, but 19th in the nation with 77 or 77.1, I believe, which is very high for a basketball team at the college level. Right, and the conference, their first in free throws made with 334 will now more at the <laughs> as this game continues. Yeah, very very rarely do they shy away from, from taking shots at, aggressive shots down in the paint and driving to the bucket and drawing fouls. Unfortunately, there's a foul there from Virjoga. I believe that's her second with Bamberger on her. She's been giving her Virjoga a bit of problems. Um, but that's what Bamberger's there for the Gales. That's what she's there for. She's going to be aggressive, and they're going to try to feet run their offense through her. She's very physical. Very, very physical. Hollingsworth finds herself into the game for the Zags. And there she is again. Bamberger looking for, a, looking for the ball. Mastora unable to get it to her. 
The Zags are not letting them get into our off their offense. Kaylee staying with Ms. Thor really good. Tough shot there from Whedon. She's a three-point shooter. But great that defense. Is, that is not her <laughs> kind of shot. And that great defense forced that kind of shot, and the shot clock went off, and that's exactly what Coach Fortier probably wants from her girls. They kept it all out of the key. Three from Kaylin. Kaylee. Kaylee. Kaylee from three. It's so cool. Your sister passes you the ball and you make the <laughs> shot. You guys can just smile and make your little signals. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's that's something you do if you have siblings in your house or in your backyard or at the local park. And right. You know, that's fun, but doing it at a high level where thousands of people are watching. Good memories, good lifelong memories. The chemistry of siblings carries over beautifully for the Zags and the Trong twins. Exactly what they want. Good job, Mel. Good job, that Zach defense. They want them to stay in front of Bamberger because if you get in front of her, you can deny the ball, which is exactly what Mel did on the last possession. Kaylin with the screen from Hollingsworth finds Kaylee. A lot of pick and roll movement here from the Zags. 58 seconds left in this game or in this in this quarter. Hollingsworth cutting beautifully from the left side finishes. Beautiful dish from Kaylin, and nice finish by Liza. That's how you use the pick and roll. <laughs> Proko traveling, swarming them was Hollingsworth and Kaylee. Kaylin will step out for the last 40 seconds of this quarter. Kaylee finds Walker on the wing. Takes the Hollingsworth screen. Gets into the paint. Finds own rebound. Now they've got time. Shot clock should be off. But Kaylin, Kaylee unable to finish there, but Kempton there for the second chance. Being aggressive, unable to convert. Six seconds left. Holland down the court, finds Dalton. Tough shot off the backboard, unable to convert. And we got a 17-13 game at the end of the first quarter. The Zags showing their defensive prowess towards the end of the first. And with that, we are going to head into a quarter break. You're watching Gonzaga women's basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium. So just the Zag. We are back in the kennel for this Thursday pink out basketball game between the Zags and the Gales. We're gonna go back to their last matchup and what they were, the Zags were able to accomplish and what players stood out in that first matchup. The twins, the twins stood out in the first matchup. Kaylee and Kaylin both had 14 points while Bonnie came in with 13. 
Um, like I said, not many people had double digits. This those three, and with Mel only having two, she still contributed with 10 rebounds. So just trying to see who will be scoring more in this game is interesting to see. The Zags do have strength in numbers, and they do spread the wealth on the points front. So not many teams, a lot of teams have a dominant scorer or someone who takes the helm of offense, but the Zags really work it around, and Bamberger with a beautiful pass to Kroko, who finishes the layup for the Gales. The Gales have been open down low, and good job on the guards and forwards of seeing them backdoor cutters. Sierra Walker going down the right side. No, no one able to stick with her, and she finds a beautiful kiss off the glass for two. I love when she shows off that, yes, I can make those threes, but I can get down and dirty, too. I can get to the basket. Kaylee, a, a good aggressive defense there on Holland, and they're able to get the ball back quickly. A lot of pick and roll here early from the Zags and a deep three from Walker. Testing her heat there. Dalton with the ball for the Gales. Bamberger just grabbed that rebound. She has five rebounds in the game so far. She averages nine rebounds a game, so I think she'll get to her average tonight for sure. She tests her skill set there with a three. She is a double-double machine at times. She's always close to it in every game, so wouldn't be surprised this early with that many rebounds, her walking away with a double-double at the end of this one. She leads her team in 16 blocks and 16 steals. And fun fact, her father played at St. Mary's too. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> awesome. Kaylee showing her skills there. She's been aggressive on the drive this whole game. And there she's able to convert, finds the screen, and able to wrap around Hollingsworth for a nice little right-hand layup. The matchup history of these two teams is quite interesting. It's the Zags are 47 and 29 over the course of the amount of times they have played each other. And Coach Fortier is 13 and four in her career against the Gales. And as of recent, Gonzaga is on a three game win streak with Gales. So the, the Gales are looking to break that, hopefully here in, in the uh, kennel, but the Zags are known to be dominant here in the kennel. They're 44 and four since 2018 here in the McCarthy Athletic Center. That is dominance. Uh, to say the least. And we've been seeing from the key players, uh, Egym so far really has been as integral as Bamberger has been for the, uh, the Gales. There's our stats right there. 15.6 points per game. He's at six in the WCC and 9.1 rebounds per game as we were saying. She's pretty close to a double-double machine. Every game, that's her game. She's gonna contribute at least 15 points and nine rebounds, but most games it is a double-double for her. Yeah, so far early, the Zags have been doing a good job of swarming their guards to make it really difficult for them to find her in the paint, but it seems like if there's any transition opportunity, Bamberger is uh, pretty quick and able to find her way down the court and get herself an opportunity to either square up against the Zag or uh, be wide open for a layup. And she's, she's well-rounded in her skill set. You saw a little give and go from her. Um, she hasn't done much shooting yet, but we'll see. She took a three, but uh, you don't really expect three-point shooting, a uh, three-point shooting specialist from a player who's usually working the post. Right. But the offense definitely ran through her, and they know what she can do for this team. So let's just stay tuned to see if the Zags will be able to continue to hold her off. Dalton taking the ball up here for the Gales. I would say Williams is a defensive specialist there for the Zags. Seems like every time she comes off the bench, she's bringing a high level of defensive energy and really good at moving her feet. W once again, just a great defense. The Zag girls, they move their feet. They'll let you run into them, but they won't stand there. They won't back down. They'll stand there. He's in that last play, ran into her, lost control. Zags ball. Williams with a pull up from the free throw line. 
actually a nice look and nice drive by Williams. I wish that would have went in for her because I feel like it would have gave her a little bit more confidence. Or like, yeah, I'm ready. Spark for the team. She's not, yeah, she's not, when she comes off the bench, she's not much of the aggressive on the scoring end. She but just that takes defense, what, yeah, she has absolutely. it. Absolutely. She takes what comes to her on offense, but defense, she is aggressive and makes her impact known. And there is her, her aggressiveness allowed Kempton to get around Bamberger for the steal. Kaylee finds Williams. Another high screen there for the Trong. Kempton. Likes that little mid-range, almost elbow shot. She gets a lot of those in the game usually. That distance is, is money for her. Such a poised player. She takes what comes to her, like you said about uh, KK. But Mel, she'll go for it. She'll take that. She'll try to drive in, but nothing's ever rushed. She's never rushed. Great aggressive defense there from the Zags again. Kaylee unable to uh, get it herself, but she keeps it alive, and Abby O'Connor Helping out, finds the ball, and the Zags are running their offense again. Way to hustle. And they get the and one. Go ahead, Kaylee. And that's what I'm saying about fighting to the finish. I want to see which team is going to fight to the finish. And clearly, Kaylee's showing I'm going to fight to the finish. I'm going to run for the loose ball, then I'm going to come back down court, take control, and get my and one. She's had that shot a, a, a good amount of times, a handful of times so far in this match. She, she may have converted one just a, a few minutes ago at the end of the first, but uh, that one she's able to draw the foul as well and she converts the free throw. It's one thing we can say about the Trong twins. They, they can shoot the shot or they can find themselves a shot. They are playmakers for sure. Williams again making her name known on the defensive end. I love her on defense. She used to, her length, her size is so good and she, she has to know it. She's quick on her feet. She keeps her hands up. She's moving around. And when you have that size in front of you, it's hard to, <laughs> to play a regular offensive, whatever the coach says, as our offense. Look at her again, getting the steal, going down court. Let's go, KK. Nice pass off. Finds O'Connor. Uh, a little messy there, but still some good showing for defense, for defense of the Zags. And that is a tough shot from Whedon. Not what you want. But they're able to find Laura. From the wing, knocks down a three, 26 to 18. Gonzaga still holding the lead. But with Williams, when she's on defense, if she's on you, you, you can't be telegraphing at all. Her hands are moving and yet with that length, uh, it makes it a whole lot harder to get around her. Kaylee working the screen again. And a travel there, I'm quite surprised off the call. Bit of aggressive uh, defense there from the Gales on Hyvins. And Kaylin will come in for Kaylee. Rap taking the ball up for the Gales. And Michaela staying in front of Rap beautifully. Tough shot there from Astora. Ball stays here. The Zags bench is not happy with that call. I can say, sitting on the sideline um, at social media, sometimes, sometimes the refs are wrong about whose ball it is, for sure. Yeah, the bench had a good angle from, from where they were sitting of that call. And an overthrow from the Gales. O'Connor able to come on with it two on one. And O'Connor finishes with a right hand. The Zags are starting to heat up on the offensive end. The 10 point lead here in the second quarter. I just love their transition. Great defense. The hands are always active with the Zags. Always up. Bamberger looking for the second chance opportunity, but she is swarmed. But they call a foul. The Zags are trying to be straight up on defense there. But Bamberger able to use her body and draw some contact to get herself to the line. Her size and her strength works in her favor. She can get the second chance and go back up and up and up until she either draws the foul or scores the basket. And 
If the Zags are able to defensively hold her and keep her from getting those opportunities there in the paint, it, it's a total another game there for the Gales, totally off of their game plan. It seems as though every time they come down the court, Bamberger's posting up and looking for the ball. She's unable to convert on both free throws. Kaylin finds Hollingsworth at the top of the key. Walker gets the screen but fakes it. Goes for the mid-range. Kempton with a second chance opportunity out to Kaylin for three. Now that's the basketball. You grab the rebounds, you see your open pan, and you trust they'll knock it down. Zags definitely out rebound their opponents and they are capitalizing here on those second chance opportunities. We did not able to make it to the top of the key. St. Mary's actually has more rebounds than we do. However, <laughs> we score more off of our turn um, off of their turnovers and yeah. second chances. No, a bit more efficient on the offensive here. Oh, beautiful pump fake there from Kaylin. Had her flying by. Said goodbye. I'm putting this in. <laughs> Kempton already with seven rebounds tonight. Three more and she'll have what she had last game. Whedon finds Mastora. Hands are active. Mastora finds it back outside. She's going into the key and she draws a foul. Looks like she uh, drew a foul from Hollingsworth there. But the uh, help side defense from the Zags is excellent when anything goes into the key. There was three Zags around her, Mastora. She was not going to be able to go up with anything easy. O'Connor will take a seat there for the Zags. Yeah, they won't make anything easy on defense. If you notice, they keep their hands up, and that's something that you, you, know, you hear all the time. Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. But when you literally keep your hands up, how many uh, deflections they've had to get those steals and turnovers from the other team has been because of their hands being out and getting those deflections. Another thing about the defense is they communicate really well on the court. You obviously can't pick it up when you're watching it from wherever you're watching it from, but uh, defense that are clicking at the way they're clicking right now, it's all vocal communication is such an integral part of being able to switch and help and um, just talk it out and n not give uh, the Gales any opportunities at anything easy. See, communication is key in life, relationships, basketball. You need it. We need to all be on the same page. It's the answer to all of our problems. Exactly. <laughs> and Harrison with her first points. And there's a look from Kaylin to Melody Kempton. Beautiful transition. She brought her goggles today. Just beautiful. And a foul there from Kempton on Harrison. So there we see Kaylin finds Mel, Mel finishes, and there we go. Easy transition, two points. And what you notice there is a lot of the, the Gales, when they're coming back, they're running with their back facing the ball. And that's that's a no no in basketball. You can't, you gotta keep those eyes up. And uh, with that, Kaylee Either Kaylin hustle back it, and turn yeah. around or Kaylin, run back with your hands up. Kaylin took advantage of that. She sees, she doesn't al only see uh, the player that's open, but she sees the players that are trying to stop the player who is open. So that's that kind of point guard vision that you need. Great hustle and defense by Bree. That's all I'm saying. They keep their hands up. She got that deflection. She tried to go after it. Didn't quite get it, but everybody in the gym loved that hustle, that determination, that fight. Hannafin comes in for the Gales. The Gales have been reaching into their bench here in the second quarter. In that first matchup, they, they stuck with their starting five for the majority of the game, but in this one, they're working the bench a bit more. Hollingsworth, beautiful defense and rewarded with the rebound, but Mastora heads up, able to get a three from the wing. Coach Fortier is not happy. She saw, she saw a foul there from her end. 
The crowd is not too happy with that call. Sierra working the screen from Hollingsworth. Getting aggressive, going down the left side. Unable to finish, but it stays with the Zags. And here comes Kaylee. Let's see what happens here. Yep, Mastora just right there. You can't really tell from that distance for, for uh, this camera angle if there was any hand-to-hand -hand contact or any, it might have been all ball, it's tough to say, but uh, Mastora still heads up defense there for the Gales. It's like an offensive foul from Hollingsworth trying to push off to get open and well so sold from Croco of the Gales. Walker up on Mastora, providing a bit of uh, pressure, and they've been bringing all the pressure here in the first half against the Gales. And a tough pass there from Croco, and the Zags take advantage. Kaylee finds Hollingsworth at the top. She gets, oh, unable to get the shooter's touch. But on the ground foul there, I believe from the Gales. With Bamberger out for the for St. Mary's, it's, it's much more difficult for them to figure out what they do on that offensive end. And with that, she comes back into the game. You can tell they run their offense mainly through Bamberger. So she got out. It was like, what do we do now? Little pause here, the, the ref's talking something over. But Kaylee is ready for the inbounds pass. I think they're discussing who the foul was on, but nonetheless, the, the Zags have been uh, playing at a high level defensively and con being able to convert. Let's see. They're trying to determine who, which Gale that was on, but Walker coming in, tough Ooh. shot, and she draws the foul there from Astora. No hesitation there. Well, that's one thing about Walker. When she shoots, she shoots. She is not going to hesitate. Any sharpshooter that you have on your team, that's if you if they have that kind of DNA in them where they don't not do not hesitate. That is a good sign that you've got a, uh, a sniper on your squad. <laughs> She's definitely a shooter, and shooter shoot. And Zags showing why they like to be aggressive because they get those free throws and they, they take advantage of the free part of that free throw. Mastora aggressive. Swipe there from Bree and Mastora a bit frustrated by that. Defense from Salenbein. Hyben comes out as Kempton finds her way back in the game. There's a replay there. Oh, is a Walker with a beautiful strip. Kempton at the elbow. Back to Kaylee. Working that high screen again. Kempton looking for the mismatch. Hollingsworth unable to handle the ball there as Holland comes down the court and misses the right hand layup. Uncharacteristic error there from Holland. Good job on Hollingsworth for not fouling and just running behind and seeing what would happen. Kempton liking that mid range there. Getting the nice little roll from the front rim. 39-24, Zags with 45 seconds left here in the half. Eight points for Kempton, seven points for Walker, two for Hollingsworth, and 10 for Kaylee. Holland redeems herself there with a left-hand layup. The Zags have been working that high screen all game. Kaylee with the three, pump fake, finds the floater, and it oh. sits on the top of the front rim, unable to roll back in. Whedon goes down the court, but Walker She's the telegraph pass. She did what she 
She did what she could in that two on one situation. Sometimes you gotta kick the ball and make it a soccer match real quick. It's almost yeah, it's almost like a PK. It's just a guessing game there. Yeah. In a way. Whedon with the inbound, only 15.7 seconds left here for the Gales. See if they try to run something or the Zags keep showing their dominant defense and give them a tough shot here to close out the half. But a nice little pick and roll from Bamberger. Salenbein, beautiful help side defense. By Abby. Let's look at it again. Did the pick and roll, Bree knocks it out. And then between Abby and Bree, they both get in there. <laughs> gracious Zags. call by the rest. Yeah, it was a gracious <laughs> call. I'm just looking at it. And Kaylee unable to sink the half court shot, but the Zags come away in the half pretty, feeling pretty good. 39 26. They really turned on the defense as the game went on, and uh, the Gales are having a hard time here being able to run their offense. But with that, with that 39 26 lead, we're going to head into a break, and you're watching Gonzaga Women's Basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium. And we are back here in Spokane, Washington for a little halftime breakdown of uh, the matchup between the Zags and the Gales. So St. Mary's there, we'll start off with them. Uh, it's been a bit of a struggle here in the first half, on, especially on the offensive end. In that first game, first matchup they had in uh, Moraga, it was a much closer battle at, at half, but there's some glaring stats here for St. Mary's that they definitely have to clean up, and one of them is being turnovers with 16. Yeah, there's, um, the Zags have been doing good, forcing those turnovers and getting the deflections to get their points on the other end with their fast breaks. But I think that St. Mary's needs to find their rhythm when Bamberger is out of the game. She doesn't have a lot of points in the paint. They don't have a lot of points in the paint tonight. But they only have two three-point shots. So it's kind of spacing the game out when you don't have those three-point shots like as the Zags do. Absolutely. And they're showing some highlights there from, from the Gales. Amastora leading their team with nine points. And she's been aggressive. She's had four turnovers, but 
I think it is a good thing for her to not shy away even after mistakes, but it's very difficult for them to funnel everything through Bamberger when the defense is so swarming with these guards coming off the bench in the starters, just not giving them any opportunity to look or throw a pass into Bamberger. Now they're doing great on fast breaks, beating the Zags back down, getting that easy um, two-point layup, but it's when they try to set up their offense, the Zags defense has just been too good for them to set something up and get an easy shot. Yeah, and with their defense, they're, they're 22 to the 10 of second chance points. They're, they're capitalizing on these turnovers, which is uh, what you want in any situation. You get a turnover, you want to you wanna convert on that and give your, 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 your team the advantage on that front. And then all the other thing is free throws. They, they just don't miss their free throws, and they're aggressive to where they get free throws. Sometimes you get teams with guards who just don't be aggressive, but they make their good shooters so they can make their free throws. But the Trong twins and Walker, they're, they're working the paint left and right side, and everyone's everyone's con contributing on the offensive end and most of the actions in the key and with the action in the key that goes in they're they're opening up opportunities for three-point shots so i would i would maybe see maybe even th more threes in the second half because the gales have to to you know make that adjustment and cover the key and maybe have to switch into doubles when the ball goes down into kempton or whoever it may be down low going into the post so yes definitely agree i just Got to keep giving credit to that Zags defense, though, the way they've been staying in front of um, Bamberger and denying that ball for her to only have six points in this game today. Now, she does average 15 points, so she does have a whole nother half to get there, but her being at six points for the first half, it's a phenomenal job by the Zags. And with that, we're going to end our little halftime breakdown, and hopefully we can see some Zags back out here and balling. But uh, you are here with us on the WCC Network, watching Gonzaga women's basketball on stadium. So field goals.
And uh, we have a graphic here for what happened there in the, uh, the first half. But just going, just going into some of the stats here from that from that first half, field goal wise, uh, the Zags shot 38.9%, uh, so slightly worse than the the Gales, but it was just the free throws and other things that allowed them to extend that lead, and they shot better from three too. So four from 11, and the turnover discrepancy is such a big deal. Right, the fact that St. Mary's has 39% and GU is at 38, it does go back to the fact that St. Mary's has only been to the free throw line five times and made only two free throws out of the five times, whereas Gonzaga has been to the line seven times and made all seven. So they have extra points from the free throw line where St. Mary's does not. Maybe they need to find ways to draw more fouls to get to the line, to get some more points up in an easy manner. I think so, and with bench points, it, uh, that's commonplace, I think, for the Zags. When you have uh, Kaylin and uh, Yvonne coming off the bench, they're just natural scorers. So it's usually whenever they play a team, the bench points are always a uh, a, uh, a plus for the Zags. But, yeah, the big thing is points off turnovers and free throws, I think, we've seen. And in that first matchup, it was free throws. But the, the, the turnovers being such a problem there for the Gales have just made this game a uh, bigger a bigger gap earlier on than in that first time. So I think with both these teams that come out in the half, there, there's got to be some big adjustments from the Gales and counter adjustments from, from the Zags to prevent them from, you know, making a little run to come back when they come back in the third quarter. Zags definitely need to keep up their energy. They left with at the end of the second. Um, the Gales need to find some new spark. You could see at the by the end of this game, we, the Zags may have four players in uh, double figures, and that's uh, there's not many teams that can say they have a, a team that can do that. And with that being, Melody Kempton has eight, Kaylee Trong has ten, Sierra Walker has seven, and Kaylin Trong has eight. So they they as we've said, they spread the wealth on the offensive end. And for the, for the Gales, it's it's kind of been just couple players who've been able to put out points and um, with them down they and they can't just heavily rely on Bamberger when the the Zags know that they're her, her key to their to their offense so you know uh, defensively I'm sure coach Fortier early on said we we got to limit her for sure mm -hmm. but um, like you said when, when Bamberger was out it was very difficult for them to figure out what to do uh, with that swarming Gonzaga defense and not really anyone else who provides a aggressive post presence on their team. And the Zags post presence is just, it's well-rounded. Kempton and uh, Ejim and Hollingsworth and Hybens and Verjoge, they all are able to run offense through the post, which is good for them. And with that, we will head into another break. You're watching Gonzaga Women's Basketball on WCC Network on Stadium.
we are back here in the kennel in Spokane, Washington. Gonzaga leads here 39-26 going to the second half. And we'll see if these teams have made the proper halftime adjustments to either keep their lead or uh, close, close the lead that the Zags do have. But uh, Gonzaga showing why they are a uh, the number one team in the WCC and holding the lowest amount of points per game of their opposing team. And uh, with 26 only for St. Mary's, if they keep it up, 52 points is not a, uh, not a, a good offensive performance there for St. Mary's. And they're gonna roll out here with the starters from the first half into the second half. Usually what the Zags do, they, they, they're consistent with their lineups uh, when starting in the first half and second half. They, they, Coach Portier has, has found a rhythm in how she switches out her girls and really uh, everyone knows their role and, and what when, it, when it's time for them to contribute and it shows in how they just run through the substitutions. And right goes to Bamber aggressive, but for Joge. Good defense by Anna. Make sure she didn't foul, just stay with her, keep her hands up. Zags are starting off with a bit of a different offense, doing some off the ball screens instead of the common high ball screen. Sierra Walker oh. with a hook from the left, unable to convert, but Joge collapsing for the rebound. That was a beautifully run play there. Nice pump fake. Gave her a nice look at the basket. It just didn't happen to fall down. But we have a teammate of great size to get you the rebound. And you get another chance like this for another two points by Mel. And in the key was Holland, able to find Dalton, working it back to Bamberger. She's got for Joge on her. Going to the right for Joge with the block. Kaylee. Eyes up, looking for something, but they go right into their offensive set. Winging the ball around, Kempton finding her positioning down low in the post. And Rajogi gets the ball down low. She's going to work it on Bamberger, swings it to Walker. No hesitation. Unable to hit there, but the second chance opportunity for the Zags. O'Connor going down the baseline, finds Rajogi. Beautiful pass for the left hand lay. The vision, the movement. The Gonzaga ladies are clicking early here in the third quarter. They're lit, I'm lit, because that's what you want to see. You want to see your team get chance after chance and then find that nice move, make the nice play. Drive to the basket and then find your open player to just make it look like great, easy basketball. And Rajogi disturbing that reverse layup attempt there from Astora. Rajogi at the top, working it down there to Kempton. She's making her presence known and she completes the layup there from the right side, dominant. All game in the post for the Zags. Okay, Anna has been working for this team. Let's see what she does down here. Again, another Again. block. She is just disturbing their piece down there at that pain. She's not going for it. O'Connor's layup rattles out, but Kempton fighting for rebounds gets fouled there from Holland. And the bench is on their feet. They've been up and cheering their teammates on. Let's and just praise Anna real quick. That's the second block she did down there. Since this game has started, um, St. Mary's, the Gales have not been able to score down there, and it's just all been because of her presence at the basket. Whether she blocks it or not, her hands are up, and they're in the faces of these Gales. And she kicks it out to Kaylee. We see her involved with the offense in the last possession, too, dumping that ball down to Melody to get those two points. Kaylee trying to set up the high screen there from Kempton, an offensive screen. Kempton a bit shifty there, and you can't be moving on the screens. They're going to call that offensive from the Zags. But the Zags have come out of the half here aggressive on both ends, and this time, unlike in the first to start, Offense, offense is clicking. Mastora looking for that right wing three. And Walker, no hesitation again. Unable to hit. Dalton taking it up the court, but no Gales down the court with her. She's stuck there, finds Mastora. 
And Kempton rotates beautifully over to strip and get the steal. Sierra Walker with a nice and easy left hand lay there from Kaylee. The Zags are clicking here early in the second half. The bench is lit, the crowd is lit. Coach has to be proud of how her players are playing right now. The fact that they could do that transition, that's just what you want to see. That's what you want to see. Yeah, they're looking good doing it too. The, the jer I love these jerseys. They're my favorite by far. They only wear them once. I wish they wore them more, but the pink and white, oh, it's just, it's beautiful, I think. I'll I'm the eye. definitely a pink gal, so tonight has just been great in my eyes. It's been very fruitful. <laughs> and we definitely have to shout out the, the bench. The bench of the Zags, energy is just, oh, so it's infectious. And uh, two, of the, two of the redshirt uh, players on the team, Kelly Stokes and Peyton Muma, really are the, the pivotal uh, players on the bench who bring the energy. They have special celebrations. They're always hands up for a three, always optimistic on what their teammates are doing. And if, if you have redshirt uh, freshmen or players that aren't playing this season on the bench, you can't ask for anything else. That's, that's what you need. They're literally doing, they're so much fun. Talking to them and seeing them, they have a celebration for a, a travel. And with, and with that, we are going to head into a little break here. You're watching Gonzaga Women's Basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium. Back in the kennel, the Zags have extended their lead to 21. And the Gales haven't been able to score at all here in this second half, and they, they need to look for something here. I'm sure Coach tried to throw up a play, but Yvonne Egem denies that, goes for the left lane and converts. How many times have we seen it tonight? With the deflection to the steal to the fast break, two points for the Zags. That's just what's been happening tonight, and that's their game, that's their plan, and it's been working. They put a lot of worth in those turnovers. They do not come away empty on points when it comes to getting the ball back. And the defense is humming too, making it tough for the Gales to get anything in the paint. Had to settle there for a three attempt. Kaylin looking for Kempton down low, finds her. And she just right away goes up, still aggressive for the second chance. Rebound and foul on the ground there from the Gales. Holland with a foul, and there you see there, Ejim. Deflection the still, lay it up. It's easy. <laughs> Great defensive anticipation there. You can't, you cannot telegraph anything against the Zags tonight, that's for sure. Kaitlin finds Ejim down low, working Bamberger, going to the left, hook shot. Beautifully done. Nice move, nice move. Way to get around her and just get that, like you said, that hook shot, use her left arm to create that space around Bamberger's size and two points, goes X. And there's some good ball movement from the Gales and Mastora finds a corner three. She's been a bit of a bright spot scoring wise for the St. Mary Gales. And I know that's what the coaching staff wants to see. You move that ball around, you find the open person, Open person, knock it down. Not a lot of dribbling too from the Zags on offense. They're just moving the ball around. Kaylin getting the screen from Ejim. Beautiful behind the back cross. Almost gets the touch there for the jumper. And there goes Mastora down the court. No one on her, but she has to pull out. Run the play here. 
Okay, it's time for the Zags to get back in position in their defense. Whedon, a little too aggressive offensively, and Kaylin gets the layup from the right side, and she ain't missing that. No way, Jose. It's too easy. The, the girls are literally making this game go from talking about a, it's going to be a close game and one point deficit in the last time, and the girls are literally like, up, oh, deflection, steal, two points, up, oh, deflection, steal, two points. It's the game. And in the first half, it was a pretty even on the rebounding side, but the Zags look like they're just, they're they're capitalizing on rebounds as well, just crashing the boards. And there's O'Connor as we talk about rebounds. She gets around Holland there and draws a foul from her, going for the rebound. Well, I mean, even in the first half, uh, both teams ended with 19 rebounds. And now the Zags have 30 and the Gales have 21. Coach Thomas there for St. Mary's needs to figure something out here. Some in-game adjustment. But the, the Gales are are playing off-brand basketball, and that's credited, obviously, to the Gonzaga defense. The energy here in... We're back here in the kennel in Spokane, Washington, and Gonzaga has been playing their best basketball of this game so far here in the, in the third quarter, shooting 50% from the field and crashing the boards. Definitely uh, owning the rebounding uh, differential between the Gales. If they haven't early, if they weren't earlier, they are now. What's actually a cool stat is that they actually have 15 offensive rebounds and 15 defensive rebounds, giving them a 30. Rebounds up tonight. Kaylin working down the left side. Finds Williams on the corner. Little makes her first appearance into the game. Beautiful pass there to Ejim. She's going to have to fade away and finishes there in the key. The player to watch is showing why she is the player to watch. Now that was a, that was a sneaky pass, and that was a difficult shot to make, but both of them did what they did to make sure that happened. Little with good defense there, but Holland making the tough fadeaway for the Gales. 24 point game. Here with three and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. Williams finds Egypt in the post and she works it again from the left side. These little nice dishes down low to Ejim has been working phenomenally and she's been finishing strong. We say that all the time, she doesn't have the biggest size but she will finish at that basket regardless of who's down there with her holland looking for a shot kicks it out to wrap and she hits the three for the gales first three from the gales in a minute and i'm actually surprised that we haven't heard anything from whedon T tacy whedon she is their three-point shooter on the team and actually holds the career record for three-pointers at St. Mary's at 283. So I'm just a little surprised she hasn't had any threes tonight. 
But then we see the nice move by Kaylin, once again showing how both of them can get to the basket and create their own shot. Rap running the offense with Little on her. A lot of dribbling here from the Gales. And there goes Holland in the key. Astora with Kaylin on her. Yeah, just, I think just way too much dribbling for an offense. They just aren't able to get anything good off of that. The ball movement is just not there, and a shot like that is not what you want to see at the end of the shot clock. Oh, and she finishes there. Kaylin Trong with the balance, the touch. Beautifully done there. Now, I wish the crowd would have been able to, well, the viewers would have been able to see the bench's reaction to that. You guys got to have love when your teammates are in full support or all the energy is in the building. That was amazing to see all of them get up and have their little different <laughs> celebration reactions to their teammates. Um, nice move. Two-point, possibly three-point play. Three-point play. <laughs> the Zags showing why they make their free throws, too. Still going 100% from the free throw line, eight of eight. Zach still rolling with their man-to-man -man defense, working all game. As to playing good defense on Whedon, on Rap, excuse me. Ejim able to rotate over and knock that out of bounds. You would think though after some time, the Gales would realize that, especially with Ejim, if you're playing behind her, she's not really behind. She can easily swoop around and get that deflection and head back down court. Yeah, the Zags are very quick on their feet on defense. For Joge, squaring up with Bamberger in beautiful defense, rotating her feet, not giving her anything easy. But it stays here with the Gales. Good defense, tough shot. It's really um, for St. Mary's and us. It's between, well, for St. Mary's, it's between Anna and Bamberger down there. Can she get her shots off? Can she get her points? There's a good cut there from Whedon and a, a foul there. Michaela Williams not happy with that call. She felt like it might have been a jump ball or she was swiping at it. Um, but the ref saw otherwise as Whedon will find herself at the line. Might be good there for Whedon. She hasn't been able to make many of her shots here. And it's always good to be able to get an opportunity to shoot some free throws and put them in and kind of find your rhythm with, with your jumper with these free open shots. Definitely need a shot to go in, though. Once you see a shot go in, you feel better. You just feel like, okay, now I can. I found my rhythm. I found my groove. Let's let's get into it. But let's see. Miss both free throws for Whedon. She has a quick free throw routine, kind of almost rushing it in a way. Maybe that's not as common, but Egypt unable to convert that right. tough running layup there. I to say, speaking of rushed, it looked like she didn't even know where she was at the basket. She had a and had to figure it out last moment. She had a millisecond of time there to just <laughs> right. up and chuck, <laughs> chuck and hope. <laughs> we didn't with the last shot though. Maybe she just need to get the ball in her hand to start I taking some shots for the uh, Gales, even though it's about to be the end of the fourth quarter with only 55 seconds left in the third. Hybens and Walker enter the game with Ejim and Little taking a seat. Zags roll right into their offense, working the left and right side of the court. And Walker takes the three, and she nails it. C for three. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And she gets right back on defense. The Zags celebrate, but they know when it's time to, to keep it going. They, they, uh, they, don't, they don't stop putting pressure on. And yeah, their celebrations are usually like a little smile, a little design, but they're doing that as they're running back down court to play their phenomenal defense that they're so known for. They're all business here. Work hard, play hard. Kaylin gets the screen for Joge. Oh, Ooh. and a beautiful look and idea. But uh, Joge wasn't Just quite, on the same page. Yeah, just wasn't quite ready for it, but the idea is good as Sierra Walker there knocks down the three-pointer. She is the three-point specialist for the Zags. Ranked 26 in the country now. She was 27 last time we was on here, but moved up to 26. Bamberger gets a shot off. 
unable to bank that one in to close out the third quarter. And the Zags have a 65 to 34 lead, 31 point lead. And with that, we're gonna head into a break. You're watching Gonzaga women's basketball on stadium on WCC Network. And we are back here in the McCarthy Athletic Center for pink out night between the Zags and the Gales. The Zags have extended that lead to 31. They turned up the heat in that third quarter on both ends of the court. And uh, it's not looking good here for the Gales. And the Zags are trying to keep this momentum rolling here in the fourth. Yeah, the Zags have found their rhythm, found their, they found their game. They're in their game now. And there's an open three there from Holland, unable to finish the shot. And it'll be Gonzaga ball. Gales just haven't been able to find their rhythm or their, their offensive groove the whole game. Kaitlin running the point. Goes right into the play. Verjoge looking for the screen. But a moving screen there from Verjoge. Gives the ball right back to St. Mary's. Croco of the Gales comes into the game. And they still bring the pressure. Walker is up and on top of Dalton there, bringing the ball up the court. They keep the same energy front to back in this, in this basketball game here, the Zags. They collapse beautifully as well when someone enters the paint. No easy shot there from Holland, but she's able to Bounce that one in there for two. Once again, uh, good defense, tough shot, but sometimes those tough shots is what you need when you have the type of defense they're presenting. Walker almost got that left-hand layup to go, but a little disruption there from the Gales on the defensive end. Salen Bine on the wing. Gets that screen from Hyvins. And Kay Lynn from the corner. Hello. The Zags are lights out from three here she in now the has, second half. Now has 18 points for tonight. And speaking on that, we didn't, uh, Mel's not in the game, but she has 12 points. She's about to check in here. So, I mean, not 12 points. She has 12 rebounds here. Just showing again why she averages six rebounds. But we never did congratulate her. So she just eclipsed 500 career rebounds in the game versus USF last weekend. 
That is a, a massive accomplishment in college, in, for women's college basketball. Not, there's only a few players who can say they've done that as Salenbein taking advantage of the open rebounds and the, all the Zags were crashing the boards there and Salenbein was able to find it and finish for the layup. Did you kind of uh, realize Bamberg isn't in for the Gales right now, but in that last possession, you see Honest hands up, Mount's hands up, Breed hands up. That's a lot of sides going for that rebound and Breed ended up getting the rebounding and the extra two points. Size is definitely on the Zag side right now in this game. And speaking of Melody Kempton, she comes back into the game as and so does Kay Lee as her sister Kay Lynn and Hyvins take a seat. The Zags have been running a lot of the point. Kay Lee or Kaylin will get a high screen and then they'll roll into an, another like screen off post move. But there they're going down to Kempton there and she draws the foul. Right, we've been seeing a lot of those dishes from the the elbow or the high post to throw it down to the low post and let them get some work in down there for two points from the paint. They have the versatility of their forwards to be able to, to, to run an offense where they work through both of them in every play they run. And Kempton, strong there. Very strong, very poised. Assessing the situation, taking control. And the Zags able to get their hands on that one. Walker, beautiful, no look. No, okay, see. I see you, see. I see you, see. <laughs> okay. She pulled a trunk on us. She, she knew she was doing that right when she got the ball. <laughs> she uh, knew she was doing that. Oh, yeah, she, she didn't look that way the whole time. She knew Kaylin <laughs> was right Kaylee there. was going to be there. And there's Kempton finishing with the and one. The Zags are hot. They're on fire. The energy is what it needs to be for the way they turn this game around. So we see right here, Vani gets it, throws it up to Mel. I see. This is, I feel like, their, their, their best offensive game here in, in uh, the kennel this season. Like, everything is clicking. I mean, the first quarter was a bit tough, but ever since that, they've just been able to swing the ball around, find the shots they want, and, and make their free throws, too. It's definitely been a lot of fast breaks in this game. Whether that's been from deflections or just seeing the open man get down court and shooting it up there. The fast breaks have led to those easy two-pointers, and which is why the league is the way it is. Great for the Zags. Hadley coming in for the Gales, getting her first minutes of the game. Kaylee Honor. Hadley going into the paint, and Hollingsworth Called on the foul there. But Hadley, still. small but aggressive. Just like you said, just got in the game, but drove straight to the basket to get a, a foul drawn. And now she's already at the line. That's good to see from someone who hasn't played in the game. You know, it's a bit of a spark. Uh, even the, 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 the deficit is not deterring her from still being aggressive and with that, her being aggressive in the future when she does get the opportunity to get more minutes, right. th these moments of being able to come in with just how many minutes you get, just taking advantage of it and trying things out and figuring out where you fit in on your, uh, on your team when it's actual game time, it's big for her when she, when she will eventually get her minutes and her playing time. This definitely will uh, build her up. Build Absolutely. Her up. Especially playing against these girls like this. You you play with the energy, you play with the level like these tell girls all the time. Play with the boys, play with the boys, because you're playing with that quickness. When it's time to play a game, it's not nothing new. You already got it. She hits her free throw there. Looks like a lane violation to give her that second chance opportunity, which is good. See a basket go in for herself. Egypt looking to find space there in the post. And Salenbein takes a three. Back rim there. And we'll go to the St. Mary Gales. Rap taking the ball up with Little on her. And we've got subs lining up coming in for the Zags. Rap working it on Little. Still a lot of dribbling and with that a turnover. It's just when you have those two, the ball is stationary with a player for so long. 
it just the ability to adjust to movements on the defensive end is so much easier because you don't have to track the ball. You just have to track your, your who you're <laughs> playing or who you're guarding. And so if you're just dribbling as much as they are, it's not going to be beneficial in any shape or form for their offense. Ball movement is definitely the best thing for offense uh, or set offense. Move that ball around. Get the people open. Because if you move the ball quick, the ball moves quicker than feet. Ejim with a strong finish there from the right side. So Michaela Williams still bringing that awesome defensive pressure here in the fourth. Hadley with Kaylin on her. Proko looking for something with Ejim on her. But Ejim just denying that. Nothing there for the Gales. Proko going down the left side. Stuck. She's got to put something up. Beautiful pump fake. And she finishes there with the right. And that was actually great footwork by by Croco to just keep moving, keep moving. Then to find that open, um, find that open up and under. Yeah, got her yep. up in the air there and made that l right hand layup look a lot easier. They haven't been able to do much of that. They just first they they barely get the ball into that position where you're close enough to the hoop to make that kind of move it's due to that Zach's defense they have denied so many passes down lower just to their players in general their arms are up and i i pray to that they well, i hope to keep seeing that in future games keeping their arms up getting that extra shot Had, look at hadley yeah, heads up just just not oh. shying away from the the moment when you're when you're a player who's smaller that's one of those what she did there is one of the things that uh, when I played, I like to do too, where you just kind of you hide behind someone on uh, the other team, and then when the when the inbound comes in, you pop out and you steal it. And she did that there, but she was not able to convert there. We actually saw that earlier from um, another player on their team. Williams working the screen from Hollingsworth, and Kay Lynn for three. She gets the ball back. She's gonna take another shot at it. Gets Hadley in the air. Ejim from the baseline. Can't hit the mid-range. Williams still crashing the board. Hollingsworth has to die for it. Keeps it alive, but Hadley gets there. Her hands on the ball. She brings it up. How many times have we said Hadley since she's gotten in this game tonight? Yeah, she's making her presence known here. Only getting some minutes here in the fourth, but. Made it to the free throw line, drove to the basket, got a steal. Now uh, got an assist off. Coach Thomas probably take a bit of notice there. Definitely. Maybe think to bring her in earlier in the game. Ejim with second ch chance opportunity with that rebound. Williams getting the right screen there from, from Ejim. Ejim back there from the left side in the and oh. one with West on the foul. A lot of and ones here for the Zags today. It's an and one mixtape in the kennel. You see her put her body, you dip that shoulder and you're, you're you're drawing the foul. So if you can draw that shoulder, hit that bump, and then bounce off, lay it up, the and one, easy two. And with that, we're going to go into another break here. 81-44, Gonzaga. You're watching Gonzaga women's basketball in the kennel on WCC Network on Stadium.
we're back in Spokane, Washington, here in the McCarthy Athletic Center. And the Zags are putting on an absolute clinic on both ends of the court. And once everywhere, free throws made, fundamentals at a high level. It's been nice here for Gonzaga. Very nice, especially in the second half. I think it kind of gave them a new look at what their defense could be or what they know they are capable of doing now. And they're 10 for 10 on the free throw line. This e is a beautiful e night for them. Ejim will step out probably for the rest of the game. Beautiful performance from her, 15 points. There we go again, the deflection from yeah, KK. She's finding her, uh, she finds her groove on defense. I, It definitely is the spark to her game. The Zags looking to run something here into the post. Find Garrison there, but Michaela crashing there for the help side. And they get the ball back possession arrow for the Zags. Three minutes and 18 seconds left here in the fourth as Kaitlyn takes the ball up for Gonzaga. I like how KK plays hard. Whether she may not be scoring, but she still she plays hard. And sometimes that defense is what your coach wants from you. Maybe I don't I don't want you to shoot the three all the time. I just need you to cause some pressure, cause a problem, make it not easy. And she knows that she can do that. So. I like this. I like to see her out here. She definitely knows her the value she brings to the team, and she definitely capitalized a deep three. Front rim there. Can't stick that one there for uh, Kaylin. Yeah, that's on the mound. Kind of seeing that coming. He's going to call like an over back or something with that. And Kaylin will find her way out of the game as Salenbein comes in. So all the starters and... Key scorers have taken a seat, and the depth of the of the Gonzaga Bulldogs is going to show out here in the last two minutes and 41 seconds. I mean, the differential in height <laughs> with their bench is still staggering. Staggering. <laughs> to St. Mary's, like every player on the Gonzaga is tall as the tallest player for St. Mary's right now. I think their shortest player is uh, ours, speaking on the Zags, are the Twins when they're in. Or Sierra. Nah, probably Sierra. <laughs> and Hadley, once again, making an impact here in the fourth. Finds herself at the free throw line. Aggressive. Nonetheless, the difference in score. Makes one, misses the second. The foul on the ground there from Hollingsworth. Second time that when Hadley's at the line, She's been able to shoot three shots instead of two due to a lane violation. Oh, not Hatley, but West. Second time the Gales have been at the line and got a third shot from a lane violation. She hits her first one. The Gales have been struggling from the free throw line. They'd hopefully like to clean that up as the season goes on. They're sixth in the WCC and they do have the opportunity if they close out well, they can move up to fourth in the WCC. And that, when it comes to the tournament, that is a big difference in seeding and how many games you have to play and how many days you have to be in of the tournament. So, Ivins, beautiful pick and roll there with Salenbein. Nice dish down low. That was good to see and nice to see, especially from those two in that combination, because that'll be a group that'll be back for next year. Execution on offense. It's been consistent no matter who's on the court here for Gonzaga. Wrap. Salenbein on her. Hadley being aggressive. Going down the lane and finds her way past Hollingsworth and Salenbein for the finish. I actually like Lil Hadley out there. And I hope uh, Coach notices her and, you know, sees all she can do and what she's doing tonight to give her more chances to do what she's doing. Salenbein with the three from the wing. Back rim there, but Michaela Williams crashes the board. And a push there from the lead Hadley. Trying to not make that rebound as easy as it was. 
Just big credit there to uh, Coach Fortier. The, the game plan is perfectly executed here, and the, the plays they set up, they were running a couple, I think, just some high screens and just working it into the post and kicking out or doing whatever uh, they've been doing on offense has been clicking every single time. They either make their shots <laughs> or they're getting a good one at least. Looks like when she kicked that ball, it might have went up in the stand. <laughs> she had <laughs> made a little face and apologized to somebody. <laughs> But yeah, so what you said about Coach Fortier, Coach Fortier and the Zags um, executing the game plan on defense, they executed the game plan. They stayed in front of um, Bamberger and they kept their hands. I get those deflections. If I'm anyone watching right now who's who coaches or who plays, I'm trying to figure out what the heck they're doing tonight. And maybe implementing it into my team's my team's game plan because it's it's what they're doing is everybody's on the same page. Everybody's doing it. Everybody has their hands up. Everybody's going for the rebounds. Everybody's playing hard and keep they're fighting like they're they're playing through their mistakes. And that's what that's what basketball is. You play through your mistakes. You play hard. You make sure y'all all on the same page, and that's how you end up with these beautiful games and these wonderful turnovers and fast breaks all day long. There's a nice block there from Hannafin on uh, Salenbein, who's trying to go on the right side. And there goes Hannafin down the center. Salenbein able to rip down that rebound. 40 seconds left in this one. 84-49, Gonzaga. Still looking to run plays here. The Zags are just getting uh, taking as many opportunities as they can to fine tune their offense for everyone on the team. That's what you do when you want to create depth and Hollingsworth draws the foul from behind. Find herself at the line. Hollingsworth, only a couple points in this one, but hopefully she can knock these down. She does there for the first. She's a good shooter too. She hasn't got the opportunity to show it. Yeah, she's one of their uh, bigger players who will shoot that three ball and can nail it for sure. Unable to finish on that second free throw. Three Still points, four rebounds for her though tonight. Almost coast to coast there from Rapp. It was actually nice by Rapp, it just didn't finish. 10 seconds left and Salenbein will hold on to it. And Gonzaga putting on a show for the kennel. Everyone on their feet, pink out here in the McCarthy Athletic Center. And the Gonzaga Bulldogs come away with a big win, 85-49 over the St. Mary's Gales. And the Zags go to 21-5, 12-1 in conference. And the big next, the next, I mean, the next big game for them would be when they have to rematch against BYU. They got to redeem themselves off of that loss here in in the. Uh, in Spokane and hopefully reclaim uh, their lead in the WCC. Well, if you ask me, my player of the game for tonight is definitely Melody Kempton at 17 points and 12 rebounds. Double-double, girl. Hope you enjoy the rest of your night because you deserve it, Miss Melma. <laughs> yeah, showing uh, her, yep, her there she is. Sure. <laughs> yep, player of the game. Yeah, she deserves She played a good game tonight. They all played a great game, great defense. They all played together, team basketball, and it was something that I think uh, the coaching staff would be proud of. And what's beautiful about this team is they have so many people who could be this player of the game. It's on any given night, whoever is getting the opportunities to score or the chances, they, uh, they capitalize and create themselves the opportunity to become the player of the game. And after that big win there from Gonzaga, we're going to call it a night. Thank you for tuning in. 85-49 Gonzaga Bulldogs. You're watching Gonzaga Women's Basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium. <laughs>